This conference will now be recorded. I'm assuming you can all hear that, right? Yes. Okay. All right, Joe. Right, good, after good afternoon. This is the uh, Planning and Zoning Liaison Committee meeting for Economic Development Special Meeting uh, Tuesday, December 15, 2020. Uh, meeting is called to order and I guess we've got a light agenda. I guess we want to start off with the uh, minutes of our last meeting. Does anyone have any comments on that? Hearing uh, none. Uh, I'm all set. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept them. I don't know if we have to do that. Yes, we do. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, you I guess that we, <laughs> review of action from last night's meeting, I guess is the next thing on the agenda. Uh, Tim, you want to start us off? Or? Yes, I, I will. You know, I was okay. with the, um, the um, proposed um, regulations uh, for the I-5 and the IX. Um, just to start with a, an overview, I really feel that even though these are being presented by PNC and it's PNC's work, I really feel they're being written by the water division. Um, I appreciate their input. I really think that the um, some of the things in there uh, are, are well done. I really love the the ability uh, for the um, owners to uh, let the natural growth on their property uh, without so much mowing. I think that that's a home run. Uh, I like the wording at the beginning of the I-5 uh, where it says we have to, uh, I don't remember, Let's see. I don't remember exactly how it's worded, but it just says that we have to take all precautions to protect the inland wetlands and, and the watershed. And, and I agree with that. But I think beyond those two points, they've just gone way too far. I mean, the limitations are, are just too great to meet the halfway point of being able to um, comfortably develop for the uh, future of Wallingford and yet maintain the safety of the, um, the inland wetlands and the watershed. So there has to be a reasonable um, point where, where we can get through this. But at this point, I, I think we're, we're just, um, you know, we don't have any direction. I mean, how do you represent the land that we have. And um, there was another point that one of the homeowners made um, at the meeting, and he said that somebody went around uh, High Hill Drive and, and they put uh, written notices in the mailbox to attend the meeting. That to me, I really feel like that came from somebody in the town. I am not, I don't know who, but that was wrong. Uh, it's good to have public input, but these people are adult people. When they bought their houses, they knew, or they should have known, that they were next to a, an I-5 or IX zone. There's no way I would buy a piece of property and not know what the zone was or what my neighbor was. Um, if you go up north to buy a piece of property, it's typical for the realtors to say you're next to um you know uh, a forest and, and that's a big selling point i don't know if the real realtors are misleading these people saying you got 100 acres of woods out here it's not it's, it's is so i mean there was a lot of issues that that I, I just feel that, that, that we don't have any control over whatsoever. And it just seems like PNC is just writing down whatever is, sub is submitted by the water division or the inland wetlands. Um, 
and, and they're not they're not making a judgment. So I opened the can of worms here. Go ahead. Well, let me just follow up and say that I agree with you that the watershed area is something that's got to be protected. Uh, and and I and I think I don't know if it's clear enough to everyone that we all agree on that point. And as far as it goes for development, again, I, another point I don't think the public understands that it's not in the best interest of EDC that we have these properties developed or prop, property rezoned. It's in the interest of the town. It's the burden that the future taxpayers will have to bear if we take marketable properties off the market. I mean, there's a limited tax base. Uh, and, you know, if the town doesn't manufacture anything, the town is run on tax base and it's run under taxable income. And like any other business or any other organization, the town has expenses. We have the school system, the highway department, the town employees, et cetera, et cetera. Buildings, roads, salaries, raises, benefits, all this has got to be paid. And then we have the increases that a lot of these people deserve. Uh, this money has to come from someplace. So if we don't keep our eye on the ball expanding the commercial marketplace in town, then the only other source that the town has revenue on that I'm aware of is the homeowner property. And how much are you going to burden the homeowners with? So again, my concern is, yes, we really, really want to protect the watershed. But technology being the way it is today, there's a lot more we could be doing in that land with today's technology playing it safe. But it's not even being considered, and that's what concerns me. It's just like it's a safe haven. Why? Why is it a safe haven? Why are we exploring the benefits? And lastly, what I'll leave it with is that this is not a couple of year review. Uh, we've, I know I've been, Jim, I know you've been involved in this in over, I'm going to say over 15 years. If it was longer, I wouldn't be surprised. And we've hashed these things out. As late as October, we had a, 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 a town meeting where we had something worked out that wasn't reflected in this. And I have to tell you, I was very disappointed. Very disappointed. So I don't know where we go from here. But and like you said, Jim, there was a lot of good things in this. But in the watershed, the I-5 zone, something's got to be done with that. You know, we've got to protect. The ultimate thing is to protect the water. No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. My my concern is the conversation is, how do we protect the water and expand the growth? That's what I think the conversation is. Not protect the water at all costs. Makes no sense to me. I'm sorry, Tim, you wanted to say something. Yeah, Joe, if I can, um, I think everybody needs to mute their mute their phones or mute their computers unless they're actually talking, because there is some background noise coming through. Um, and it, there's also two people that have called in uh, that doesn't appear as if their phones are muted either. So if the people who have called in could identify themselves through the chat box so I can include it in the minutes, I would appreciate that. In the interim, if the callers could mute their phones, because again, someone's got some background noise going on. That's a little uh, trouble. Jim, mute your, mute your phone if you would, mute your computer. And then um, I guess, Hank, you were going to say something, so I'll, I'll mute and let you go. Uh, thanks, Tim. I was just going to ask you, uh, I had to leave about 10.30 last night, so uh, how did, how did uh, this get uh, wrapped up? It was, it was um, in essence, continued. So they never did close the public hearing. They left the public hearing open, which means that they're going to have another public hearing in January um, to discuss, you know, to continue the discussion. Okay. 
So, uh, Joe, if I may. Um, if I could interrupt you. There's someone on the phone that hasn't muted their phone. If you could please mute your phone. Or we'll have to mute all phones. All right, uh, Tim, I don't have that option. Again, I'm on the uh, have a great meeting page and I can't get off it. All right, so uh, just my two cents. Um, you know, I, I do think even though we said uh, that, you know, um, protecting the watershed, as you just said, and responsible development uh, are not mutually exclusive events. Um, I think that fell, well, I think the commission heard it. I think the public that attended, um, you know, perhaps it fell on deaf ears. It, it just, I get the sense that, you know, no matter what is being considered, there's going to be opposition, which is their, that's their right. Um, I, um, we, we do have, uh, you know, 12 businesses. I did not share this last night, but I've shared it in previous meetings with, with this group that you know, we've got 12 businesses that exist in the watershed right now uh, that are doing so quite responsibly and not impacting negatively the water supply. So it does not mean that we can't continue to do that. But um, I think I think it was implied uh, through the water department presentation that because the um, the, the um, sodium rates have gone up over the last several years, um, it's implied that um, that the businesses that are there are responsible for that, and I would I would question that. The businesses that are there now in the watershed have been there for decades, and having the sodium level go up in the last couple of years, um, I can't say that the businesses are or are not responsible for it, but I, I don't think we can jump to the conclusion that they are. I think it could be coming from road salt, it could be coming from I-91, it could be coming from any number of sources. And frankly, it's you know, you think about pavement area, there's a lot more road on I-91 and Research Parkway 68, there's a lot more road surface than there is parking lot surface. So I think we need to be asking um, the Water and Sewer Department to uh, um, you know, to disclose what the source of the increased sodium is. But I think that they, the bigger issue is that the regulations as proposed um, disallow anything in the watershed. And I refer specifically to in the I-5, which is on page um, six of the document, it's 4.1, and I will go down to um, item uh, C6 where it says, now here's where we've increased the ability to expand uses in the I-5, which allows manufacturing, compounding, packaging, assembling materials and products, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the bottom, except in the watershed. Well, three quarters of the I-5 is in the watershed. So there, it's almost as if they're saying, okay, we'll allow these uses, but not in the watershed. So what have we gained? We've gained zero. Um, item number seven in that same paragraph, storage and warehousing in a building containing a minimum of square feet of yada yada, except in the watershed. So anything, any allowances that were made um, for further expanded uh, um, uses in the watershed. For some, uh, I don't know whose phone that is, but any, any uses in the watershed, um, All right, hang on, I'm gonna to try to mute. See if I can mute these callers. Apparently I can't. But any of the uses that are were, were allowed in the I-5 were excluded from the watershed, which really gets us nowhere. So I, I just felt that, um, um, as Jim said, you know, water sewer really dominated the language. But that's, I think that's the subject of the next discussion, so. Well, wait a minute, Jim. Uh, excuse me. I mean, the water and sewer asked Talbot to put this in. Why can't we ask him to take it out? We we can. We can. You know, I think I think at this point, it's not a matter of us to, to construct the document. It's a, it's a matter of us trying to take and, and make sure we respond to the document that's presented. 
I, I understand that, but I, I, there's obviously changes that have been requested. Um, and from our department, I'd like to see it taken out, and I'd like to hang on um, the, the uh, first 410, the very first paragraph, which it, it says required high standards of development. In, in the watershed and, and you know leave it to the engineers uh to, to deal with this uh but you know i can't help but to think that if pfizer called you today and said we want the old um first of all five research, yeah five research parkway that people wouldn't jump through hoops to, to put that in and I just, I, I don't see why we can't request it. It, it doesn't, before the meeting, once you get this document to the meeting, they're going to vote on it, all right? And I don't know if it's going to be January or February, but if you can ask that it be taken out now, you know, before the next meeting, and, and you know, rely on the engineers. We just relied on the engineers to take down the old Bristol Myers building. It was done beautifully, not a hitch. It was gorgeous. You know, they, they did it in a very professional, very caretaking manner for our watershed. And, and that's what has to be done. Well, excuse me, again. Request. Again, we should ask for a special permit in the watershed. I mean. They could go hire governors with a special permit uh, and and cover themselves that way. We're not saying just open it up to development. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Joe. I agree with you, Joe. I think you know the the we we want to make sure that we have oversight on anything that goes into the watershed. One example that I used last night um, was was the word manufacturing. I think, you know, typically people, you know, they associate manufacturing with some sort of a dirty process. And manufacturing is an NAICS code. That's a, that's a government designation. Um, our zoning regulations do not have um, subsections to the manufacturing category. Some, some communities do. They have manufacturing. And underneath that, they have heavy manufacturing, light manufacturing, assembly, they have subcategories. We, we don't. In, in Wallingford, manufacturing is one category. The example I used last night was Radial up on Northrop Road, where they are considered by NAICS code a manufacturer. However, they are not manufacturing anything in that facility. They're assembling products at that facility. And in fact, 60% of the staff in that facility are engineers. So that's, a, that's an assembly facility. They get manufactured parts from elsewhere and then they bring them there they uh, you know assemble electronics equipment we have several of those in town all right we have we have one another one in the watershed on research parkway that does the uh, verita that does the same thing they assemble so my point is if if we if we uh, use a special permit as the guidance to make sure that we have the ability as a community to say we don't want that kind of manufacturing Oh, we'll allow this kind of manufacturing because it's really assembly or it's clean. Or it's no, there's no parts being bathed in oil, no metal shavings being produced, that type of thing. I think that gives the commission the, uh, the control that we collectively agree they should have. We, we don't want to have, you know, carte blanche on a manufacturing use. It's, and that's why it was submitted a special permit. And then late in the, in the process, water sewer asked them to add the language except in the watershed so um so i will jim for your request i will ask them to, to reconsider that language um and i guess our collective point is that the special permit gives them the overarching controls that we as a commission or as a committee uh and an EGC commission would would recommend it and re respect the fact that they have to have it would you put that in writing to them or uh, well, I'll, I'll 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 draft it in a minutes and I'll start a conversation and see where it goes. Let's say that. So. Okay. Because you know, unless we get something in front of them before the meeting, 
I think it's going to be very hard for them to make any changes during the meeting. I, I really got that sense. You know. Yeah, I would agree, Joe. Once, once this draft gets to the meeting, uh, there's going to be very, very few changes. They're, they're just going to, and, and I really think they're going to vote on it. And, you know, and again, there are a few positive things. Uh, I really think that golf courses should not go in that area. I mean, given the uh, amount of uh, fertilizer and so forth, uh, straight on the ground for runoff, I, I would agree with that, all right? But, you know, to Tim's point, if you, if you can't eliminate the company that wants to do assembly, Well, golf courses are not allowed. So on item eight, it says indoor or outdoor recreational facilities are allowed except for golf courses and amusement parks. So unfortunately, the, the head of the water division that was making the um, presentation last night was working from an old draft. Uh, and yet you may have heard that come up several times. He was recommending language changes that had already been made. Um, and that was one that he, he got hung up on with golf courses and amusement parks, but they had already been eliminated, so. Did he, Hank wanted to say something, but before I go, did we lose the, the phone people? The two no, callers? Still one, still one caller on. Okay, because I don't see them. Okay, I just wanted to know. Uh, they Hank, didn't you had identify to... themselves as I requested either, but that's. Okay, Hank. Hank, you're on mute. I was going to say that I, I apologize that I have to jump off this call, uh, but I, I, I would be willing to meet again prior to that um, uh, to that meeting so we can put a game plan together on uh, uh, I, th I think a lot of what Tim you were saying in this meeting here today needs to be brought forward either in a letter or um, verbally um, you know if, even if we have to list all 12 of those uh, uh, those uh, companies that are in the watershed that are that have been you know there for as you said for decades uh, that needs to come out uh, because it's a very powerful statement but um, I got to run to this other meeting. If you decide to meet again, I'm happy to meet. I, I, um, I enjoy the conversation and I appreciate uh, hearing uh, how we can uh, uh, move forward. But, um, but I got to run. I'm sorry. Thanks a lot, Hank. Take care. Okay. Thanks, Hank. Tim, it's up to you. What do you want to do from here? I think I think we're good. I think uh, we're. We're in agreement that um, uh, we feel that there's work to do. I don't think our position has changed. Uh, and again, that position is that responsible development uh, can happen in a watershed. Um, the town has proven that we have responsible companies in the watershed and that um, we should not disallow responsible development. It's a matter of making sure that we have a, a good path to uh, to foster responsible development and make sure that you know anything that's irresponsible or potentially damaging can happen. So um, I will get the minutes put together and um, uh, I have a conversation about the uh, potential of changing any language before the next meeting. Um, and then uh, I will uh, consider a written response to the Planning and Zoning Commission highlighting our positions on uh, the document as it's presented. I don't, I don't know if you have any plans to change the document between now and next month or not, but I'll, I'll find that out. So the next meeting that they're having is in January. Correct. Yeah, it's usually a week after ours. Okay. And you know, Tim, I, I would also push maybe the special permit so that we have control. Right. So that planning and zoning has control. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're, they're planning and zoning's next scheduled meeting is January 11th at 7 o'clock. Just like you said. Thank you. All right.
Yes, we, we yeah, I, I'll emphasize the fact that we feel that, uh, and we agree that there needs to be a, a high level of control and that the, by virtue of the special permit gives, in fact, gives them that level of control. And to, to take and, and disallow, you know, just, just flat out disallow is not in the best interest of the 45,000 people in the town of Wallingford. I, I can respect the fact that, you know, some neighbors may feel that it's in their best interest, but it's not in the best interest of the entire community. Yeah, you know, the other thing that came up last night, again, they started talking about, you know, someone, I think two different people brought up traffic and this and that, which was not something that we were there to discuss. But, you know, how quickly people forget that, you know, there they were, they were well over 1,200 employees at Bristol Myers, which represent, if you figure two, you know, vehicle trips a day, 2,400 more cars, you know, several years ago than there are now, but yet they still feel as there's too much traffic. But, you know, um, I guess that needs to be dealt with in a different conversation. So, you know, not to prolong it, but that's the unfortunate part I think of this whole thing is a lot of the residents are not are, are being fed from someone misinformation. I mean, on the chat bar yesterday, there were two or three people talking about gas stations, and that was never in the plan. That was never even talked about. If it, if it was ever brought up within the last 10 years, it was a no-no. And here they're talking like as though somebody was talking about it. So based on that, I'm wondering how much misinformation is out there that's unfortunate because we don't hone in on what's real and could be, again, as you said, for the benefit of the 45,000 residents of the town. But all right, I think we've got it now. Uh, I, I think we're at a point where we should should close, unless somebody has something else to say. No, I'd make a major uh, motion to uh, close. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll sign in Christmas. Wish you Merry Christmas. Well, Happy Holidays, everybody. All right, you too, Joe. Okay, Jim. very good. Nick, thanks very okay. much for your time, guys. Take care. No problem. Thanks, Tim.